Halloween, Sunday, Sunday on Mother's Day, and what's there to do but read Emily Bronte? When it rains, we read Roderick, 1830. Lie down and rest, the fight is done. I comrades to the camp retire. I don't know if this is a war poem. Gaze not so earnestly upon the far gleam of the beacon fire. Listen not to the wind-blown sounds of music and of soldiers' cheer. Thou canst not go, unnumbered wounds exhaust thy life and hold thee here. Have that hand power to raise the sword which since this morn laid hundreds low. Have that tongue strength to speak the word that urged thy followers on the foe. Were that warm blood within thy veins which now upon the earth is flowing. Splashing its sod with crimson stains, reddening the pale heath around thy, thee growing. Then Roderick, thou might still be turning with eager eye and anxious breast to where those signal lights are burning to where the monarch's legions rest. But nevermore, look up and see the twilight fading from the skies, that last dim beam that sets for thee, Roderick, for thee shall never rise. The U.S. is in here. Meg, M.G. from the U.S. What is, which U.S. is that? Is it United States? I don't even know if it, I don't know what these initials mean. We don't know any uh, Emily code. <laughs> Twas yesterday at early dawn I watched the falling snow. A drear scene on winter morn was never stretched below. I could not see the mountains roll round, but I knew by the wind, wild winds roar. How every drift in their glens profound was deepening evermore. And then I thought of Ula's bowers uh, beyond the southern sea, or tropic prairies bright with flowers, and rivers wandering free. I thought of many a happy day spent in her Eden Isle with my dear comrades, young and gay, all scattered now so far away, but not forgot the while. Who that has breathed that heavenly air to to northern climes would come, to gondols, mist, and moorlands drear, and sleet, and frozen gloom. Spring brings the swallow and the lark, but what will winter bring? Tis more twilight noons and evenings dark to match the gifts of spring. No, look with me over that soul and main, if thy spirit's eye can see, there are brave ships floating back again that no calm southern port can chain from gondols of stormy sea. Uh, oh, how the hearts of the villagers beat to feel the frost wind blow. What flower in Ula's garden sweet is worth one flake of snow. The blast which almost rends their sail is welcome as a friend. It brings him them home, that thundering gale, home to their journey's end, home to our souls, whose wearying sighs lament their absence drear, and feel how bright even winter skies would shine if they were here. Hmm. At Castle Wood, the day is done, the winter sun is setting its sullen sky, and drear the course that has been run, and dim the hearts that slowly die. No star will light my coming night, no morn of hope for me will shine. I mourn not heaven would blast my sight, and I never long for date ways divine. Through life's hard task I did not ask celestial aid, uh, celestial cheer. I saw my fate without its mask, and met it too without a tear. The, the grief that pressed this living breast was heavier far than earth could be, and who would dread eternal rest? When labor's higher was agony, dark falls the fear of this despair on spirits born for happiness, and I was bred the maid of care, the foster child of sore distress. No sighs for me, no sympathy, no wish to keep my soul below. The heart is dead since infancy, infancy. unwept, for let the body go. Hmm. Interesting. We'll do another one. A S to G G S. Uh -huh.
What are these? Are they letters? I do not weep. I do would not weep. Our mother needs no tears. Dry thine eyes too. Tis vain to keep this causeless grief for years. What? So her brow be changed and cold, her sweet eyes close forever. What through the stone and darksome mold our mortal bodies sever? What through her hands smooth never again those silken locks of thine? Nor through long hours of future pain her kind face over thee shine. Remember still she is not dead. She sees us, Gerald, now, aid where her angel spirit fled. Mid hearth and frozen snow, and from that have world of heavenly light will she not always bend to guide us in our lifetime's night and guide us to the end. Look, our mother needs no tears. <laughs> this may be a Mother's Day poem. Huh? Thou knowest she will and well mayst mourn that we are left below, but not that she can never return to share our earthly woe. It's a Mother's Day poem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are reading on, um, I don't know, Mother's Day. Mm. I don't know. You think it is? Let's try it again. Mother's Day, May 12, 2019. You want me to read this to see if it's a Mother's Day poem? A.S. to G.S. I do not weep. I would not weep. Our mother needs no tears. Dry, passing away of your mother. Dry thine eyes, too. Tis vain to keep this causeless grief for years. What though her brow be changed and cold, her sweet eyes close forever? What though the stone, the darksome mold, our mortal bodies sever? What though her hand smooth never again, those silken locks of thine, nor though through long hours of future pain, her kind face over thee shine? Remember still, she is not dead. She sees us, Gerald, now, laid where her angel spirit fled, mid heath and frozen snow. And from that world of heavenly light will she not always bend to guide us in our lifetime's night and guide us to the end. Oh, no, she will and well may mourn that we are left below, but not that she can never return to share our earthly woe. We were reading from so reading from uh, Emily Branta, the author of Wuthering Heights. Mm -hmm. Read the two last uh, lines. Two last verses. Hmm. Two last. Though, and from that world of heavenly light will she not always bend to guide us in our lifetime's night and guide us to the end. Thou know she will, and well, Miss Morn, that we are left below, but not.